Polycarbonate is a very strong material, but it's not easy to print. Blending it with the PETG should improve the printability, but what happens to the mechanical properties, I don't know. Let's find out together. Hello, welcome to my tech farm. I bought another filament from CC3D. So this is not a sponsored video by them, but this channel has its own sponsor and that's the Polymaker. And I have the budget to buy any filament I want to test. I don't have to wait for the company if they want to send it to me or not. This is actually a mix of polycarbonate and PTG. 50% polycarbonate, 45% PTG and 5% rest other material. Now in the meantime I can see that they removed this information about the blend from Amazon.com where I bought this filament. On Amazon DE I can still see this information. I'm not sure is this removed with a reason or they changed the formula, but definitely this filament which I bought is a mix of these two materials. Few informations from the website. Heat resistant filament up to 110 degrees Celsius which is typical for the polycarbonate and harder stronger than ABS. Again typical for polycarbonate but not for the PTG so I'm not sure what to expect from this mix but that's why I'm here. I will test it. Print settings on the nozzle between 255 and 265 degrees Celsius on the bed between 90 and 105 degrees. Now the speed only between 30 and 60 millimeters per second. This is quite low speed, I'm not sure. Maybe I will go just a little bit higher, about 60 millimeters per second. Maybe I will go instead of six, maybe with eight cubic millimeters per second flow rate, because this is what I will limit in the slicer. On the spool, quite different print information compared to one given on a website. 245 degrees Celsius plus minus 10 degrees. It's in nice orange color. <laughs> Interesting. Please keep this card on the filament to avoid tangle. Sorry. This is not brittle filament. I couldn't find information about the drying or what is the weight of the empty spool or some additional information about the blend. And I don't like this kind of approach from the companies. It's not serious. And um, to be honest, if I wouldn't get these requests from my Patreon supporters, I wouldn't even test this filament. I'm starting with a temperature tower from 265 down to 245 degrees Celsius. Generic PC is the default profile, 105 on the bed, 265 the start temperature and 60 degrees Celsius is the chamber temperature, 8 with the maximum flow. And I even reduced the part cooling from 60 to 50. And I inserted the G-Cos to change the temperature on this height. The filament goes into the AMS2 Pro. And the printing will be on the H2D Bebel FCD printer. This is the first layer, perfect start. The chamber temperature reached 60 degrees Celsius very quickly. And I always like to catch the bridging of the temperature tower. This is the last element. And as you can see the bridging came out nice. And I will show it later again. Immediately after the printing, bed adhesion check which is ok and I have to wait until it cools down. Now the bed is 50 degrees Celsius and it's completely removable. And this temperature tower looks great on any element. So let's see now the final settings. These are my regular test objects. Generic PC. No changes in the temperature, 265 with the printing, but I increased the flow rate to 10. 6 is the chamber temperature and I reduce the default part cooling even more, which will be a mistake probably, you will see soon. Start of the printing is great, this is still the first layer. And by now almost all horizontal test objects are finished. And look how fast it is printing the vertical test objects. Pad adhesion is great again. And only with the last test object I had this problem. The layer printing time was too short. I increased the maximal part cooling back to 50% and I printed two at the time and this time it came out perfectly. This was the only change. And this is the speed up time lapse video of that original printing. Everything was fine and only with that one last test object I had this problem. Just quickly to measure the shrinking and I'm measuring about the elephant foot. 79.6 this is very typical for the ABS approximately 0.5 percentage. 
But it's time to start mechanical experiments, tensile test. For better comparison I will include here the data for average polycarbonate, which is collected from that pattern summary table from 13 PCs, no fibers, but some PCABS, PCPBT is also included here, and in this case uh, this PCPTG mix is slightly weaker compared to this average polycarbonate. Layer adhesion with vertically printed objects. This is my rating for the layer adhesion with these test objects, and look how much it overshoots this rating. Fantastic layer adhesion with this PCP TG, but even this average polycarbonate is a great layer adhesion, but this is really fantastic. Shear test, side by side horizontal and vertical objects. In horizontal position, just a little bit weaker compared to the average polycarbonate, but printed in vertical position thanks to that great layer adhesion, no, fantastic layer adhesion, it is much better compared to the average PC. Torsion test, starting with horizontal test specimens, low the night degree rotation, the maximum load, 1.8. Vertically printed, and I have two because of that one failed printing. 1.5, The maximal and braking load. Horizontal more than two rotations before the brake, and the vertical parts. Uh, this kind of brake is sign of the good layer adhesion. Horizontally printed, low to 90 degree rotation, a little bit weaker compared to the average polycarbonate, but this number is interesting. I could make almost three rotations before it breaks. And vertically printed, not only that cross section is very interesting, not along one layer, but this is very rare that I can make uh, more than 90 degree rotation before the break. And look at this number compared to the average polycarbonate. Creep test the deformation under constant load of 1.25 kilograms, locking the position for more accurate measuring. 16.66 initial deformation. Day 5, the last measuring. Again locking the position, 70.53. There is some permanent deformation, but very minimally. On this graph you can see the distance between two reference surfaces, and we can see slightly more deformation on this PCPTG mix compared to the average polycarbonate. Uh, at that time I recorded only first two days, and now I'm collecting five days in that summary table. But the creeping is a difference between two days, and that's what can we see on this second graph. And we can see even more creeping on this average polycarbonate. Now about this PCPTG mix, uh, very minimally, but I could measure some creeping even after five days. Temperature test in the oven, where I want to record the temperature of the first noticeable deformation. M10 not as a small load. And this is speed up time lapse video. And the first deformation I noticed at 122 degrees Celsius. On 136, I stopped the experiment. I want to see how flexible is the material. And of course, it is soft and flexible now. These tests don't follow any standard, but I'm repeating the same testing method. And this number is very similar to the average polycarbonate. Three point bending test, this as between supports is 50 millimeters. And I am recording the deformation under these loads after 1, 30 and 60 seconds. This is under 5 kg. And this is under 10 kg load. Just a little bit more deformation on this PCP TG mix, but look at this, under 10 kg, so less additional deformation during that one minute. Maybe if I would continue this, uh, we will see more deformation on the average polycarbonate. Impact test, and I am starting with the Sharpie standard. Horizontal supported on two sides, slow motion video four times, and another testing, still four times slow motion, and the result in the right upper corner. And now switching the hammer, moving to the ISOD standard. This time it is in vertical position, slow motion four times. And another break, still four times slow motion, and the results. 
Results for the ISOT and Sharpie impact testing and I made these small icons, a reminder which is which. And for the Sharpie I don't have earlier measured values. For the ISOT I have on my DIY impact testing and this is calculated value from it. And this may be a little bit misleading because we may think that this is huge difference. But uh, there is a big deviation and if I exclude the four toughest polycarbonate materials, usually these are PC, ABS and similar, in that case the big average is a 3.6 and in that case the difference wouldn't be big, but overall this PC, PTG is still brittle material. This is a new filament type for me too, so only now I can see its practical applications. It's suitable for parts uh, that uh, needs a good layer adhesion, high tensile strength and temperature resistance, where impact strength isn't critical. Compared to ABS, it performs better overall, even if it is more brittle material, and at least it doesn't smell during the printing. Our results one more time. Creep test, tensile test and a layer adhesion, shear test, horizontal and vertical, bending, the deformation after 30 seconds, Bending test, deformation under these loads after 1, 30 and 60 seconds. Torsion test, horizontal and vertical. Impact testings, ISO and Sharpie. And the temperature test. This filament was quite pleasant surprise. And the uh, price is relatively good. So we can have some kind of uh, polycarbonate blend properties with a relatively easy printability. Of course, about the printability, I'm not really sure because I tried on your H2D printer, but at least they lowered the print temperature and this temperature tower is fantastic. By the way, let me know if you are using this filament or which printer are you using it and what is the quality and is it still easy for printing. And now that boring part, like and subscribe. But 80% of you who is watching this video already did that. The reason for this is that the algorithm is controlling the growth of the channel and I'm publishing too many videos and probably it thinks that this lower number of the view per video is enough for me. Partly it is because uh, for me the most important are my Patreon supporters and this is independent from the number of the views. Only sometimes I'm sad if some bigger work is stuck on lower number of the views, but uh, what can I do? So anyway, thank you for watching this video until the end and uh, happy printing!